everyone, it's Naomi and welcome to the Firecracker Department After Show. This is where we talk about past podcasts and I get to share this little screen with core members and community members. We talk about things that were brought up that really uh, inspired us and jazzed us. And we are talking today with Emily Churchill, who's in Los Angeles and she is in charge of our wellness department. We've got Rebecca Marquardt, who's in New York and she's in charge of content creation and also our YouTube channel and sparkler department. And then we've got AJ Edmonds, who's in Toronto, sometimes Los Angeles, and she's doing content creation as well. Thanks everybody for being here. We're talking about somebody that I just, I'm such a fan of. I have such a crush on. She's such a cool person. Celeste Pekos, she, you'll know her from Work in Progress and her short film called Past Due, that if you haven't seen it, you should go and see it. But she's also a Second City uh, alum and an improviser and just a, a, a chef, uh, a, just an artist. Like really, this person can do absolutely anything. Tell me, I mean, tell me how much you just loved this chat because I adored it. Um, Emily, what did you think? Um, I, well, yeah, I love her. And I, I do think that we know each other. Um, uh, Celeste and I have seen each other at auditions and whatnot. Um, at least I remember, she might not. She might be like, I don't remember her. I don't know. But I remember it's like, ooh, there she is. Um, um, I remember that, but then the one thing she said was, uh, "We get the opportunity to bring light to the world." Oh, that's my right? goal in life. Yeah, that's my goal in life. I love it. Yeah, it's a gift we have to and offer. She says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one thing knowing it, but but she also she practices what she preaches, right? Like the way she she does her Facebook every day, almost every day. She does like a little cooking segment on her Facebook Live, and it's just joy. She just has joy in her heart to give to people. It's really beautiful. AJ? Yeah, I mean, she was like, no, I'm not a chef, but at least now I have a reason to eat. <laughs> yeah. Talk about backing yourself into an excellent corner to make sure you're, you know, <laughs> like, make the world be she made a Dorito. She made a Dorito pizza the other day that was amazing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you can make a Dorito pizza, I'm yours forever. Yeah. Rebecca, yeah. what did you think about my chat with Celeste? I loved it. I think Celeste is just like she's she's the kind of people that everybody wants to be friends with, and then they also want all of their friends to be friends with her. Because like I'm guessing Rachel Miller put you in touch with her, and when I told Rachel I was starting a podcast, she was like, oh, "You have to have Celeste." Out. Like like she's just one of those. She has so many people in her corner who are just like, "Oh, talk to Celeste. Oh, look up Celeste." Like and and she deserves it like so much like you have a conversation with her and you're like yeah yeah I'm on board yeah yeah she yeah before I'd met her everybody uh I spoke to in the comedy community in Los Angeles were like you have to meet Celeste like just even before I had a podcast they were like she's just she's just good people uh what else did she say that kind of will be in your heart for a long time she um, said yeah. selfishness goes away and the importance of comedy becomes it comes for others you know you you we go into the arts thinking about ourselves and then you realize that to be an artist is to think about how you're impacting other people yeah. and especially right now you know, she talked a lot about how you know with the strife we're all going through the importance of comedians and storytellers and it's just so true yeah i love it emily what hit your heart oh, oh yeah. Rebecca, yeah go for it Oh, yeah. I just, <clears throat> I thought it was really fun to hear people with very parallel improv backgrounds. Like you both were part of Second City, so you have a lot of similar training. But hearing her talk about taking classes with Del Close and and how, like she said, you know, I always did all these big sticky characters. And then he was like, just play yourself. And so for a long time, she just played herself. And I think it's just such a lesson in what improv is just for functioning as a human being like not even in the arts just learning to own yourself because I think at least the little bit of improv I did taught me like oh you can't be a good improviser if you don't fully own who you are you don't have to like everything about yourself but you have to be like yeah here it is like here's all the good stuff here's all the bad stuff you're welcome to it because if you're like oh but you can't have this part then you can't you know act instinctively on stage and so just to hear her kind of talk about learning to own her space to be like no i deserve to be in this game of freeze tag so i'm going to welcome myself into it now that i just <laughs> yeah i wish i wish improv was just like re prerequisites in all like high school college programs just be like here's yeah. how to be a human 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. What about you, Emily? What did you think? Yeah, that resonated especially with me too. Um, when she said uh, the the one instance where the person uh, tapped her and was like, "You stay back. I, I got this." Um, oh, wow. And I, I got chills because I, I trained in Chicago too at Second City and um, IO and all that stuff. And uh, I was not authentic. Like I was, I was the person that was like, oh God, I can't get out there. I'm so scared. And so, right. And um, it, you're so right. You have to be authentic. She, she nailed it in that aspect. She's like, she got authentic. She got into who she is and she was able to, to blossom. And I'm learning that now, but in my twenties, I was like, oh God. Um, so it's so true. You've got to be authentic to do it. Yeah. It's vulnerable. Yeah. It's a vulnerable place to be. But I remember being on stage with Matt, who's now my husband and we were we do like relationship scenes because we were falling in love so it was super easy but you could hear people going like this is you like just like giving people like a place where they're like reflected on stage and you know then i'd also play like i don't know what what did she say like a, a, a crazy ballerina or something like that <laughs> yeah. these outlandish like no crazy ballerinas are going to be in the stage like this is you that's that's actually me so it's good to have all the voices any final thoughts from, from you, AJ? I mean, on behalf of crazy ballerinas everywhere, we're always looking <laughs> okay, there for were. someone. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've just yeah. been looking for there a, crazy a couple of crazy ballerinas. That were like, you don't know oh, who's out in that audience. To me. <laughs> to me. But I mean, so much of it speaks to what she was talking about, like being okay to be vulnerable and genuine in comedy. You know, like shtick is great and there is a place for it always, but you know, some of the funniest things in life come in the worst moments. And you know, the best yeah. comedy comes out when you just crack yourself open. And, you know, the other day, my mom, my mom continually tells me that I'm very funny. And I, I don't believe her. And I realized only recently that part of the reason I think that I'm funny with my mom is because I'm just myself. And there's a lot more, like, I'm just not worried about sort of, you know, how many layers deep of, of shit to put between me and yeah. an audience and, and for lack. I love that you just bleeped out bull, but you said the <laughs> shit. <laughs> Listen, on behalf of crazy yeah, like, ballerinas like, everywhere. Bleep, just just to be fucker. clear, your, your mother is correct. You are funny. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Maybe yeah, not on purpose, but you're funny. <laughs> Celeste is one of those I think such a beautiful performer too, because she does have the ability of going like really broad and really crazy. But then if you watch that short film, it's heartbreaking. And like Work in Progress is such a great example of like a show that's not broad. It's just about funny, weird relationships. It's not about like LGBTQ and uh, non-binary. That's just like funny, real people. It's such a beautiful example of that. Any final thoughts from you, Emily? Um, I love that she said, let's see how this will work for you. And I feel like if we could all go into things with that attitude uh, for other people and ourselves, I think it would be a lot easier for us to shed that, that those layers, right? Um, so yeah, I love that. Gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Rebecca? Yeah, I, I, uh, I had heard her refer to herself before as a queer woman. And I didn't, I, I didn't know the story behind it, but you guys talked a little bit, you, you two, not you guys. So mm. fix myself there. Um, no, the it's good. we're learning, we're learning. It. I know, yeah, yeah. Um, but just hearing her say like that, it, it just felt more inclusive to the entire community to call herself queer instead of calling herself a lesbian, where then you might be in that kind of lesbian niche, because I think especially in light of everything that's happening right now with Black Lives Matter, that the queer community is paying more attention to how not inclusive we are sometimes, mm -hmm. that <clears throat> we get distracted by our own struggle and our own journey, and we forget that it's like, oh, right, but these other people in our community are experiencing those same journeys, but also this whole other layer of stuff that we're completely out of touch with because we haven't experienced it. So I, I thought that was really cool to be like, oh, yeah, using a label for yourself that makes you just feel like part of the, the greater whole was pretty cool. Yeah, that was super enlightening for me too. I was really happy to have that little discussion with her about that because it's all, you know, it's, it's all education. It's all like ways that we are becoming stronger and better allies to everybody. Like I want everybody to look to me and to the firecracker department and be like, oh, I can belong there because those are my people. So 
uh, yeah, she's just, uh, I'm a huge fan. We're going to make a, a, a Celeste fan club. We'll have bobbleheads and t-shirts made. Maybe, maybe something fun like mouse pads, <laughs> which are the most useless swag items ever. <laughs> I don't know why. I looked around. I'm Maybe we'll make ducks. A I like a... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the mouse pad on my wall. Just Oh, yeah. yeah a yeah. Celeste duck. We'll make this, but a Celeste like ceramic duck. She'd dig that, I bet. <laughs> um, speaking, speaking of digging, what are you guys digging into these days? Oh, I'm getting good with my segues. Uh, AJ, what's going good. on in your good. world? Uh, I... I am right now working on a documentary and a series of docs I've done for the last three years where I interview students about space development and sustainability and um, how we create a government structure in a borderless environment. So that's taking up a lot of time at the moment. And outside of that, just a lot of internal firecracker stuff. Yeah, you put a, a brand kit together that is a work of art. And at some point when COVID's over, we'll have like an art exhibit of just your brand kit. It will be, <laughs> it's so boring, but it, it's we'll all walk be, through it. <laughs> that'll be a really fun walk through. Uh, Rebecca, what's going on in your world that we can support? Yeah, so I have a, a queer history podcast starting in June called Gay or Nay, uh, it's at Gay or Nay podcast online, um, and we look at historical figures who have queer stories associated with them and try to kind of reimagine them using 2020 queer terminology, and Celeste Pekosh is actually my second guest on the series, woo, uh, yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to that, and then Friends of Andy, doing, which is like down the line. But that'll be a, a fun live streaming platform with a lot of uh, talented folks coming on. Love it, love it. <laughs> Celeste is doing like the podcast circuit right now. She's like tapping into <laughs> all the. Thank goodness, thank goodness. Emily, what's coming up for you? Um, well, I'm, I'm doing Sunday meditation uh, for the after show at uh, noon Pacific Standard Time on the Firecracker Department Insta and Facebook. I love it. Yeah, we are working on a new chapter with Firecrack Department that I've been working on called Sparkler Department, where we do a segment called Naomi Gets Schooled, and I have little firecrackers or sparklers come in and teach me things. It's maybe one of my favorite things to do, because it's so much fun just to see like how little kids step into their own power and step into being teachers as opposed to students. And, um, and I'm learn I mean, I learned how to make slime. Not well. Some people said I made slime that could be used as a uh, makeup scar tissue if you were doing like prosthetics so that was my uh, but I learned how to fence I learned how to do some cheerleading and I'm learning how to do some uh, drag makeup coming up and more gymnastics which I think will always be painfully delightful uh, so come on over to firecrackerdepartment.com subscribe to our newsletter to find out what's happening subscribe to our podcast to hear Celeste's voice but also so many amazing voices that are in our community and uh, go over to our Instagram Firecracker D-E-P-T, and let us know what you thought about this after show, but also of all our things. We'd love to have you part of our community. We'd love to have you at the table. There's always something for everybody. If you're a writer, artist, I mean, everybody's an artist. Name somebody who's not an artist. You can't. Everybody's an artist. So come and join our community and, uh, and find your people. Thanks, everybody. This has Bye. been the after show. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>